I'm Alan Rappaport, and I'm working today for Neurology Reviews. And we are at a beautiful spot in Stowe, Vermont, for the 28th annual meeting of the Headache Cooperative of New England, 2018, early March. And I have with me Assistant Professor of Neurology at Harvard, uh, who uh, Paul Rizzoli, who uh, has been a friend of mine for a long time, and he's been working in headache, as I have, for a long time. And he gave an excellent talk at the conference, and I want him to just give us a few pointers from the talk, and I think you'll learn a lot from this. Thank Paul. Hi. Thanks, Alan. That's very nice. Uh, you know, I was tasked with uh, talking about adverse effects of drugs that we use in pharmacotherapy of migraine. And I, you know, I think it's an important topic because um, w what we do in migraine management still is very strongly related to writing prescriptions, using medications. It's, a, it's, a, it's not likely that uh, our um, management of patients with prescription medicines is likely to change anytime soon, even with the new therapies that are coming. So our theory was that you can't know too much about the pharmacology of these medicines. And so it, it um, probably is worthwhile to spend some time looking at some of the properties of these agents in general and um, becoming familiar with them. Some aspects such as adverse effects, adverse drug reactions, um, tolerance related to pharmaco pharmacotherapy, um, issues related to addiction, and then specific migraine uh, related addiction, uh, related issues like medication overuse headache. And then from there you can spread out and talk about some concepts that are generated uh, when you start by looking at the pharmacology and then spread that to looking at host responses and the way patients respond to these drugs and what that kind of says about your migraine patient and then from there what it may suggest about the uh, pathophysiology of migraine. So we, we went a little bit far afield as well. Can you pick uh, one category or one drug and give us a brief example of what you were talking about? Well, when every when someone asks me to pick one drug, I always pick amitriptyline. Okay. That's the drug I'm I know most a lot familiar about with. That. Right. And, and so do our viewers. Right. And um, you know, uh, what we looked at, so yes, it, it illustrates a number of the principles we were talking about. One is um, this notion of persistence of use and adherence. How well do these medications stick when we prescribe them to patients? And that's related to two things. One is how well do they work natively and how well are they tolerated? And uh, these are tough issues when it comes to migraine management, and we discussed some of the uh, details there. One of the other interesting things about uh, amitriptyline is we reviewed persistence and uh, uh, efficacy in our group of patients and found the, the, this very small subgroup of what we called super responders. And this idea of super responders, small subgroups of people who seem to respond differently than the mainstream, is true for a number of drugs and we saw it as well with, with amitriptyline. So yes, the use of amitriptyline um, illustrates many of the properties and things we were talking about. Do the super responders tend to also have fewer adverse events in general or not? That is an excellent question. Um, I'd say... That's for your next study. <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say not because we presented the super responders as kind of the counterpoint to um, a more common experience in migraine treatment, which we've all seen, which is that the uh, the patients tend to have real difficulty getting on medication. They, they as a group, seem more sensitive uh, to the side effects of medications. And the question we were raising was whether or not this is intrinsic to the migraine patient, whether or not there's something about this sensitivity that we should be paying more attention to as part of the pathophysiology of migraine rather than perhaps something intrinsic about the um, psychodynamic makeup of the patient. I think it's part of the disease. I was going to ask you, but you answered that question. Good. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, people would have really enjoyed seeing the lecture, but they get an idea of what you were talking about from how we described it. Oh, thanks for asking. Thanks. Right.